Hi everyone, I'm Angela Grassi. I am the founder of the PCOS Nutrition Center and I'm a registered and licensed dietitian and I'm also a woman with PCOS myself. And I'm coming here to you live on Facebook to talk to you more about PCOS and insulin resistance. I think it's a common topic that a lot of women uh, with PCOS are really kind of uh, not sure about and it's really complex. So I'm hoping to break it down into some, some simple pieces of information because diet and lifestyle are the primary treatment approaches for women with PCOS. And I think if you understand why, how the body, um, what insulin resistance means and what it means to the body and to PCOS, that that will help you to take better control over your PCOS. So normally, how it works in the body is normally when we eat food, mostly carbohydrate food, that gets broken down into glucose. So let's say you had um, some oats and that would get broken down into glucose and that's what your body uses for energy. So there's all these cells in your body, right? And if you think of my fist as being a cell, uh, when you eat that carbohydrate, so that oats, that would cause an increase in your blood sugar so your blood sugar would start to increase and there's all these doors on your cell walls and to get the glucose into the cells what happens is the glucose level rises that pushes on a doorbell on your cell wall and that sends a signal to your cell nucleus which is inside your cell and the cell nucleus calls over insulin so insulin acts as like a key so if you think of this pen as a key it's going to unlock the door the door opens and then the glucose goes in so that glucose from say your oats or something else that you ate that were carbohydrates and then the door shuts and that's what you want to happen if you're insulin resistant what that means is that these doors are resistant to opening and there could be a number of reasons one of the main reasons we think with women with pcos is that the doorbell is defective so what happens is if you eat the carbohydrate food, these doors aren't opening automatically and they're not opening right away. And if the doorbell is defected, which could be the case, then the cell nucleus isn't getting the signal to open up the doors. So what happens is your body is secreting insulin, uh, but it secretes a whole bunch of it, almost to act as like a tsunami to force that door down, to force the glucose into your cells. And that's why hopefully you're not um, suffering from type two diabetes because the insulin is doing its job. But what happens is if you have all this extra insulin, that gets stored in your body, usually in the abdominal section, that extra spare tire as fat, and it can also get stored in your liver, and that's when it can become problematic. And even women who aren't insulin resistant, what this means for them is when we look at women with PCOS compared to those without PCOS, women with PCOS have higher insulin levels, and that's independent of weight. So when we have lean women with PCOS, we still see that they have higher insulin levels than those without PCOS. So even though they might not be full-blown insulin resistant, they could still have an insulin issue and their body still could be pre producing too much insulin. So the goal lifestyle. So diet is certainly very important at bringing down insulin. If you eat a healthy diet, um, not necessarily a carb-free diet, but a lower carb diet with the emphasis on the lower glycemic index foods, getting in plenty of healthy fats, um, that can help to bring down insulin. If you're looking for more information, I would definitely recommend the PCOS workbook. It's a top selling, uh, best selling book for women with PCOS. It's a good self help guide, which will reinforce a lot of the concepts that I've been talking about with the insulin resistance. And it does have a whole section on understanding insulin resistance and how food affects your insulin levels. So it's important to follow a healthy diet that'll keep the insulin levels low. Exercise is a second big component to women with PCOS. When we exercise those doors on our cell walls, guess what? They open automatically. So we don't need all this extra insulin to get those doors to open to let the glucose in. The doors are opening in response to the exercise. So anything you like to do, it could even just be a walk um, and spreading out that exercise throughout the day even. If you get a 10 minute walk in the morning and a 10 minute walk later, that still adds up to 20 minutes and that can make a big difference in improving your insulin. And then lastly, another way to improve your insulin is through diet or through uh, supplements like inositol. And I'll do another whole video segment about inositol because I think it's important that women 
especially with PCOS, understand how it can affect insulin resistance. So inositol is a big key component to improving insulin, and I have a lot of information on my blog, which is PCOSnutrition.com. I personally have been seeing great success in it bringing down my risk for diabetes, reducing cravings. And there are other supplements like NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine. Um, again, more information on our blog, but NAC is an insulin sensitizer that has been shown to work just as well as metformin in a couple of long randomized controlled trials. So there are some supplements. Um, and another benefit uh, of taking the supplements is that it can help to maybe even improve some cholesterol levels too. Both NAC and inositol can improve your cholesterol levels. So look into those as an option to improve your insulin. And then lastly, a lot of times metformin is prescribed to help women uh, reduce their insulin. So metformin works more at the liver to reduce your production of glucose, not so much at the cellular level, so at those cell doors. That's more of what maybe an acetol or an insulin um, sensitizer supplement could really help with. But metformin has been shown to help a lot of women regulate their cycles and can definitely lower your glucose and your insulin levels. So I hope that clears up a lot of information about what insulin resistance is and why it's so important that women with PCOS make changes to their diet and lifestyle so that they can bring down their insulin and take control over PCOS because PCOS can be modified. It's not going to go away, unfortunately, but you can make changes to your lifestyle that's going to improve it and you can live a uh, healthy life, hopefully. So if you have any more questions, feel free to visit our website, PCOSnutrition.com. Leave some comments below with some topics you'd like to hear us talk about uh, in the future, some educational topics about PCOS, and um, have a great weekend. Thanks for joining me today.